it's good to be here with everyone and um yeah hopefully <clears throat> more will join um as we begin um so i'm gonna share my screen and then uh start And uh, can you see my screen? Can you be able to see? Okay. Great. Um, yeah, so uh, as, as Jacob said, my name is Taylor and um, I've been in Nairobi for four years with my family and I work for an organization called the Center for Mission Mobilization. And our aim with, uh, with the CMM is to mobilize the global church um, to send out more missionaries um, to places around the world that just have little to no access to the gospel. Um, and we call that frontier mobilization. And so that's what I'm going to be speaking on tonight and um yeah so first uh, before we, we really get into what mobilization is and what it looks like we're going to talk about first why we need mobilization um and so we're going to start just with what does the bible say about god's mission um, what is what is god's heart um, what does he desire on earth? Um, so what is what is the foundation for God's mission? And so <clears throat> we're first going to look at um, yeah, just these just these few verses. There's lots of verses that we could go through, but for sake of time, we're just going to look at these five. And so um, starting with Genesis 12, this is the, the call um, of Abraham. So um, God's telling Abraham, he's saying, hey, leave your family, your friends, leave your home, your land, and go to the place where I will show you. And he says, you know, I'm going to make you a great nation. I'm going to bless you. He's like, I'm going to bless those who bless you. I'm going to curse those who curse you. And, and kind of the last line is, I think, the most important. He says, in you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. Um, and so we see from the beginning um, that God has is, is chosen this family, this, this man to, to use to be the blessing um, of the nations, to bless all the families of the earth. And so he doesn't just want just one person um, or one family to be his kind of holy people necessarily. He does, but he wants it to use them to reach um, people with the God, with, with his blessing through Abraham. Basically, he wants Abraham and his family to show the world who this God is, who Yahweh is. Um, and so from there we go to Daniel 6. Um, and so in Daniel 6, this is the story of Daniel and the lion's den. I'm sure we all know it, have heard of it, heard it many times, but um, I think sometimes we leave out the end. And so Daniel gets thrown in the lion's den for, for disobeying the king. Um, and he gets saved, and through his salvation, through his being saved from the lions, King Darius writes a letter, a decree to all of his kingdom, the whole kingdom of Babylon, saying, hey, this God of Daniel, he's, he's the true God. He is the only God. He's the one who closed the mouths of the lions, and he's the one who um, we should all worship. Um, I want, it's a decree, if you don't worship him, you're going to be, you know, thrown just like Daniel was into the lions. And, um, and so we see that <clears throat> some of these stories, there's even more stories like this, like David and Goliath, but many of these stories we know have a greater purpose than just Daniel's faith or even just God's power, but God shows his power in order to make himself known um, to all people in all nations. Um, and then we see in Psalm 67, in this, this verse actually has become popular through COVID and there's a song called the blessing. And so we see, um, yeah, you've, you've probably heard the blessing, but 
says, um, may your face, so he's talking to God, may your face shine upon me. Um, may, actually, let me just read it. May God be gracious to us and bless us. There we go. And may your face shine upon us and give us peace. And that's the, the song that has come out, but that's just verse one. Verse two, he says, that your way may be known on earth, your saving power among all nations. And so, <clears throat> yes, we want God to, to look down upon us, to be with us, to make his face shine upon us, to know us. But it's ultimately so that the world, that those around us would know him and see the God, see God through us. Um, and then Matthew 28, we all, I think we all know Matthew 28, but Jesus says, go and make disciples of all nations. Um, and so we can stop there because, um, yeah, when Jesus says all nations, he's meaning every ethne, so all ethne or all ethnic people. So these are by, people by language, by culture, by tribes. It's not necessarily just Kenya, but it's the Luo, um, the Maasai, the Kikuyu. So each one of those would be a nation, would be a tribe. And so Jesus isn't just saying, hey, go, you know, go to these different countries. He's saying, hey, go to these different peoples, these different languages, and make disciples among them. And then <clears throat> we kind of get the answer to um, the blessing or the promise that God gave to Abraham in, in beginning in Genesis 12, when he says, I'll bless, I will bless or use you to bless all the families of the earth. And Revelation 7, 9, that John paints a picture of uh, people, a representative from every tribe, tongue, and nation worshiping around the throne of Jesus. And so we get to see that, um, yeah, at the end of all things, that there's going to be people from every language, every culture worshiping Jesus. And so we see from beginning to end that, yes, God wants to make himself known to us, but not just to us, but to all those around us all those around us, even to the ends of the earth. Um, so the foundation for mission is, is in the Bible, and that's God's heart. Um, and so we see God's heart, but what is, we know what God wants, but is that the reality of our world today? Um, and unfortunately, it's not. Um, and there's actually 3 billion people, almost 40% of the world's population, who have no access to the gospel. And these people, um, they're considered unreached people or, or part of unreached people groups. Um, so that definition of people, a people group within which there is no indigenous community of believing Christians able to evangelize this people group. So basically, if, if there's a people group where there's few Christians or no Christians, they don't have enough people, enough Christians to reach the rest of the people with the gospel so those people have really have no access in many of these people groups in many of these places there are no churches you know christians sometimes not even a bible in their language so these people are living and dying without ever hearing um the greatest news ever hearing about the the gospel the good news of jesus christ dying for them um, and so three billion people is a very, very large number, 40% of the world. Um, and so with that, we need thousands upon thousands of missionaries um, around the world. But what actually, what is the state of our missionary force? Do we have enough missionaries around the world to reach those 3 billion people or, or do we not? Um, and so actually I have a, a clip from one of my favorite movies. Maybe you've seen it. Um, but um, yeah, so we're going to see kind of an analogy of the state of our missionary force um, from the Avengers. And hopefully this video works. Ah! 
So this, this is, I think, a perfect picture of our missionary force um, right now. Uh, there are many missionaries all around the world struggling against the powers of the world and trying to push back the darkness, but they need help, just like Captain America standing up to this huge army um, by himself. That's what many missionaries are facing around the world today, um, just um, kind of isolated and alone and just really facing um, an uphill battle where there's just few missionaries, but lots of people who don't know Jesus and even this world trying to push back against the mission of Jesus and, and the mission of the church. And so there is, a, on, the, on the bright side, on the good side, is there's so much potential in the church in Africa, Asia, and Latin America. Um, there's so much potential because currently, 80% of the church lives in Africa, Asia, and Asia, and Latin America. That means that only 20% are in the West. So the majority of the church live in Africa, Asia, and Latin America, but they're, they're only sending 20% of the missionaries. Um, so 80% of the church is sending 20% of the missionaries. And we can't see the, reached, the unreached to be reached with the gospel if we don't have the whole church involved in God's mission. And so we, we need and we desire to see 80% of the church, the 80% of Africa, Asia, and Latin America sending out 80% of the missionaries. Um, we need the whole church, every believer, every um, local body uh, around the world um, sending out missionaries, playing their part, their strategic role, uh, in missions. Um, and so um, we, we saw just the clip of, you know, Captain America out there fighting to defend the world and that picture of, of the mission force versus uh, the great need. And so we see this, this massive need um, for missionaries, but um, where do the missionaries go that we do have? Um, because we do have lots of missionaries and they're doing great work but where, where do the ones that we have go now? And so um, currently it's estimated there's around 400,000 foreign missionaries in the world. And so these are people who are leaving their home culture, their home country and going um, outside to a different culture. And so almost, seven, almost over 75%, 77% of the missionaries are going to the reached world. Um, so this is places where there's enough Christians to reach their own people. There's enough of a church presence to reach their own people. And so, um, yeah, a lot of, as you can see, a lot of missionaries are going to places where the church is already vibrant and already growing. And really, missionaries aren't needed that much there. And then unevangelized, almost 20% of missionaries are going to unevangelized parts of the world unevangelized people groups and so these are people where there is a christian presence but there's still um a lot of people who haven't been evangelized haven't heard the gospel and so yes we need missionaries to go to the unevangelized world but the unreached so these are the people like i said that have no access little to no access to the gospel they couldn't really hear the gospel if they wanted to. Even if God sent them a vision or a dream, they wouldn't know where to go. They wouldn't, couldn't find a Christian potentially to ask them what this dream meant. Um, and so these unreached, only 3% of missionaries are going to the unreached. One out of every 40 missionary is going to the unreached world. And so you see one, we don't have many missionaries in general, only 400,000 are supposed to reach 3 billion. But out of 400,000, only 3% are actually going maybe to where the greatest need is, where the least reached people are. And so what that looks like um, when, we, when we kind of fa uh, fan it out into religious groups, religious blocks is that we have 60 missionaries for every 1 million traditionalists. So that means there are 60 missionaries um, that are trying to reach 
one million traditionalists. Which that sounds daunting. But then you go further and there's two missionaries for every one million Hindu. One million Hindus. Two people trying to reach one million Hindus. Twelve missionaries for every one million unreligious. Six missionaries for every one million Muslims. And 13 missionaries for every one million Buddhists. And so we see just like just like Captain America trying to fight back, uh, you know, Thanos' army, like two missionaries trying to reach a million people. Imagine that that's you, that you and one other person, maybe a friend, a spouse, whoever, um, you have to reach a million people. I can't even imagine uh, one million people. Um, and so we have like two people have to reach or trying to reach one million people. And so I hope these numbers show you the need uh, for more missionaries. But how, I guess that, that brings up the question, how do we send out more missionaries? How are missionaries, like how do we raise up more missionaries? How do we see more missionaries uh, going to these unreached people? And this is what frontier mobilization is about. And so I hope you see from this, from going backwards, the, the need for mobilization, the importance of mobilization, why we need more missionaries going to the hardest and maybe furthest places on earth. And so frontier mobilization um, is specifically mobilizing the part of the church with greatest proximity and strategic access to the unreached. Um, and so we've seen, um, for me, I was I, from America, and so um, the American church does not make up the majority of the church, but we're still sending out the, the most missionaries, um, and mobilization is still needed there, but there's greater potential in Africa and Asia and Latin America to mobilize missionaries, a greater number of unsent people, of unsent Christians, um, as Jesus said, Luke 10 to um, he said, pray to the Lord of the harvest for more laborers. And so there's a great need for more laborers to go into God's harvest field. And there are um, thousands, millions of Christians around the world, even here in Kenya, that um, yeah, I think are ready to be sent as long as whenever they, if they are made aware of the need. And so um, there's a have a diagram here that kind of helps show what frontier mobilization looks like. And so this, this funnel, this triangle, however you want to describe it, it represents the world with a, an access to the gospel. And so on the left side where the cross is, you have the most access. On the right side, um, where it says UPG 3 billion, uh, you have the least access. And so generally what happens or what has happened in missions is the, those on the, this closer to the cross here in the um, striped on the left side, they've, they've been mobilized. They've been made aware of the need of the gospel. And so they've gone all the way to the UBGs, um, the 3 billion. And so that's typically happened from the West um, and it's gone to unreached peoples and that's what we call frontier missions um, and so leaving your home going to another culture with hopes of sharing the gospel especially to those who have never heard the gospel and who have little to no access but like i've said there is a lot of potential there's a lot of unsent unmobilized people in the church um, in places like Africa, Latin America, and Asia. And so instead of maybe me or somebody else going directly to unreached people, we want to mobilize those people that are unsent, that are not aware of the need of the gospel and of God's heart for all nations, to then help them send out their own missionaries, even maybe go with us as we go to the nations. Um, and so the idea is, instead of me going directly, why don't I raise up an army to go with me to the nations? Um, and so what um, frontier 
or what mobilization looks like, at least for us here at um, with the Center for Mission Mobilization is one we, we help believers discover. So we engage believers um, to discover God's heart for the nations. And so just as I kind of helped lay out the need for missions, <clears throat> I helped show the biblical basis of mission, I helped show what God's heart is, um, and then I helped show where the need is, where the greatest need is. That's, that's what mobilization looks like. It's just saying, hey, this is what the Bible says. This is what God's heart is. He wants to be glorified. He wants to be worshiped by all peoples in all nations um, and just lay that out through scripture and then show that man but there's a massive massive need where almost half the world maybe hasn't even heard the gospel they haven't heard about this jesus who wants who died for them and who wants to know them and who wants to transform them into um yeah into his people his family his kingdom and so we're helping people just discover what is what what is God's mission. We help them discover by um, just meeting people of different faiths, meeting Muslims, meeting Hindus, taking them to a, a mosque, taking them to a Hindu temple, taking them on mission trips, and um, yeah, really just showing them, um, yeah, that these people are just like you and me, um, but they are following false religion um, or going after um, yeah, idols or, or things of this world that are contrary to the God that we serve. And then we want to develop them. So we want to equip them, equip believers to develop their role in God's global mission. So we, we teach them how to share the gospel. We teach them how to have a, um, how to pray for the nations, how to pray for people who don't know the gospel, we teach them how to um, initiate a um, friendship with a Muslim, with, with a Hindu. We teach them how to go into places to uh, take the gospel. And so we want to develop them and train them and, and even teach them how to study the word and, and to kind of um, build their own foundation and um, in scripture and in God. And so we want to equip believers to find their role in, in God's global mission. And then we deploy them. So uh, after we develop, we want to see them actually sent out um, into the nations. We wanna connect them with opportunities to deploy their gifts and accompli accomplishing God's mission. And so um, not every, you know, not every Christian, not every follower of Jesus is gonna go to the nations. Um, not every person I think is called to be a missionary. But I think every believer is called to play a part in seeing the gospel taken to those people, to unreached people groups. Um, and so we want to help connect believers to their most strategic role, whether that is going to the nations, whether that is staying um, where they are and reaching out to the people around them. And um, you know, one of the, the biggest ways that we at CMM do mobilization is through uh, this study, um, some people call it Bible study, small group study, whatever you want to call it, but it's called Explore. And, uh, it's helping people discover and also develop um, in their roles. And so it's a seven lesson study that talks about just the things that I keep repeating, God's word. What is God's heart for all people? What is God's heart um, as far as missions go? And then what is the state of our world today. Where has the gospel gone? Where hasn't it gone? Where's the greatest need? And then we talk about just five different ways, five different habits, really. We call them habits, just things that we, you know, can habitually do that we can make a part of our daily lives. And so we can, we can pray, pray for missionaries, pray for people who don't um, have access to the gospel, for unreached people. We can send. So Maybe the Lord's not calling you to go, but you can send out missionaries to the unreached. And then um, welcoming, um, we can welcome internationals that have come to Nairobi. Um, we can welcome um, Somalis, um, welcome Muslims at our, at our universities, um, Hindus, Indians. There's, you know, God is really um, bringing the nations to 
um, to Nairobi, to our home. And we have an, an opportunity, and I would say even an obligation to befriend them with hopes of sharing the gospel. And that's what welcoming is. And then also some of us are going to go, um, some of us are going to go to the nations, to Northern Kenya, to the coast, and even a hope to um, places like Somalia, Northern Kenya, or Northern Africa, and into the Middle East and beyond, into hard places. And then um, the last way, the last habit is the mobilizing. So um, how can we raise up other people who will come alongside of us and partner with God in his mission? Um, and so that's, that's what mobilizing is, is really just saying, hey, I'm doing this. I'm going to be praying for unreached people. Will you come pray with me? Hey, I'm helping send this missionary. Will you contribute with me? Will you help me come visit uh, this missionary on the field? Or will you help me? Will you be with me when I call him and the, so we can just encourage him? Hey, I'm going to I'm going to go meet my Muslim friend. Will you come along with me? We're studying the Bible. Hey, will you go with me to Eastleigh? Um, and maybe we can make um, Muslim, Muslim friends, or maybe we can pray, uh, do some prayer walking around Eastley or around Parklands or um, other places across Nairobi. And then, hey, have you, <laughs> have you ever considered going to the nations? Would you go with me? I'm going um, on a short-term trip to Northern Kenya, or I'm going long-term um, <clears throat> to the coast, to Mombasa, to to share the gospel with Muslims. Have you ever considered that? And then mobilizing, um, well, I guess we already said mobilizing, but um, yeah, just bringing others along with you. And so that's that's the, the, the key, the core is just saying, hey, I'm doing this, come with me as I do it. I will show you how to do it. I will model it, but you just do it with me. Um, and so that's what mobilization is, but why mobilization in Kenya? Uh, I think we've, we've mentioned, I've mentioned it a little bit, but um, we're going to go a little more in depth into why mobilization in Kenya. But first, we're just going to look generally um, at East Africa. And so um, we see um, just from this map that East Africa and Southern Africa combined have the second highest evangelical population um, as a region in the world. Um, we see that Asia, Northeast Asia has the highest, but we're ahead of, you know, Latin America and, and North America um, <clears throat> as a region. However, we, we, we make up 19%, so that is the second, that is the second highest, um, or actually the highest percentage, um, but we're only sending 9% of the missionaries. Um, you see North America and um, the Caribbean, uh, they make up 18%, so just a little less, but they send out almost half the missionaries around the world, which is amazing. Praise God that, that they, they are sending out missionaries, but do you see the potential for Africa, for all these other groups that are, um, represented here all these other regions there's so much of a, a there's a, so much of a christian population there but just a lack of sending out um, of missionaries and so um, just looking at sending <clears throat> sending per capita we see east africa sends one out of 5300 people 5300 christians so for every for every 5000 christians one is going as a missionary. There's so much potential, so many believers who can be sent out, so much of the church that is unsent, unmobilized, um, that can be used to take the gospel to people that don't have it. And honestly, there, there's really nothing greater that we could do with our lives than seeing people come to faith in Jesus. And I think everyone on this call, on this meeting, believes that and and um and that's amazing but we we can't do this alone and so there are thousands millions of believers in kenya and in, in east africa that don't understand this and so it's our duty to mobilize to help 
open their eyes, open their hearts to the needs of, of the gospel around the world. And even this map, we, or in this chart, we see that East Africa um, is the third highest. So you have Latin America and then you have Western Africa as, as the highest, or I guess you could say lowest sending per capita. Um, and so there's such uh, potential. We can see this as a negative thing. We can see that, um, yeah, that, that, that we're, we're not sending people, but or but we could also see it as a positive thing and say, man, that just means there's so much room for improvement, so much possibilities to send people to the nations. Um, and so now just to kind of narrow in on Kenya, um, we see uh, that this is, so this is um, from the Joshua Project um, and it's just a status of Kenya. And so we see, um, yeah, that Kenya, um, some people say Kenya is about 80% Christian. It's probably more like 50% or 40 to 50% Christian, which is still amazing to see just the church growing in Kenya, and even to see that the growth rate is higher than in the global average. Um, it's almost a percentage higher than the global average, but at the same time, almost 10% of Kenya's population is considered unreached. These are people who are considered have no access and little to no access to the gospel. And so Kenya is a, just a unique place where there is a massive church presence, but there's still a decent size of the population that is unreached um, with the gospel. And so uh, with the, <laughs> the, the amount of population within Kenya that consider themselves Christians, there should be no reason why we can't lower that, that number, that percentage down to zero who are considered unreached in Kenya. And I pray that we would do that as well as to the ends of the earth, lowering the percentage of people who are considered unreached. Um, and so just to look more specifically at Kenya's um, sending potential. Uh, so we said about 20 million evangelicals is the sixth largest evangelical country, almost 50% of it, of it is of its population is Christian. However, only one in 10,000 Christians are sent to, uh, to the mission field, are sent as missionaries. So it's estimated that there are around 2,000 missionaries that have been sent from Kenya, with only 200 of those going outside of Kenya. Just let that sink in. Only 2,000 missionaries with around 200 going outside of Kenya. So those 2,000, um, it's only one, that's only 0.01%. So not even, not even a percentage, not even 0.1%, but 0.01% of the Kenyan church has been mobilized to go out as missionaries. We can see that as negative. We can see that as um, just kind of we can be frustrated, we can be sad, or we can see that as a uh, positive, that there's so much potential for the Kenyan church. I believe it's, the it's time for the Kenyan church, the East African church, all of Africa to rise up and to do its part in seeing more missionaries, seeing the gospel proclaimed throughout the whole earth. Um, and so if, if the number of missionaries from Kenya being sent out grew from 0.01%, just from 0.01% to 0.1%, that would be 20,000 missionaries. That's such a small percentage, um, but it would jump up to 20,000 missionaries, which would be one of the largest mission sending movements the world has ever seen. Hopefully that's encouraging that there's so much room for, pretend, for, room for growth in the Kenyan church when it uh, comes to mission. Um, and so even looking at Kenyans, um, kind of uh, how, how they would fare as missionaries, what, what are some positives for Kenya as 
um, as a culture and as people. And so this is um, the last slide in this slide. Um, it talks about the mobilization index. And so what the mobilization index uh, is, is it, it identifies countries and locations around the world that have the greatest mission sending potential indicating locations where the church is ripe for mobilization. And so all these countries listed on this are on the mobilization index. So these are places where it's, they're just ready to be sent. There's um, so much, so much of the church is there in these countries. And a lot of the church is unsent in these countries. And so if you look, this is cultural proximity, um, cultural distance between um, these countries, their culture and UPG cultures, and look who's at the top. Kenya, Kenya is the number one um, closest in culture to average, um, average closest to cultures um, amongst unreached people groups. And even looking at Arab nations, so these are Muslim nations, um, Kenya is number four. Um, they're the top four for closest in culture to Arab nations. And so um, and not only is there a massive church presence in Kenya and lots of Christians, but culturally, you guys can relate easily to a lot of unreached people groups and even Arab Muslim unreached people groups in um, Northern, Northern Africa and in the Middle East. Um, and not only that, but your passport, I think, has value. And so there's this website that kind of tells you uh, kind of ranks the passports of the world based on how many <clears throat> how many countries you have access to and Kenya's rank is, is 73rd which you know isn't the best but it's not the worst um, but um, as far as which countries Kenyans can have visa free access so you don't even have to have a visa to get in these countries Indonesia 172 million unreached people 172 million that Kenya, Kenyans can get on a plane, fly to this country and enter in with, with no issues. Malaysia, 16 million. Um, and then there's a visa on arrival. So you just walk up to the, fly to the airport, these countries and say, hey, I wanna come in. And they give you a visa. Cambodia, 16 million unreached people. Iran, 84 million. Jordan, 9 million unreached people. Senegal, 13 million unreached people. Somalia, 16 million unreached people. And so even with your passport, you have the ability to access unreached people uh, around the world. And then just um, a few reasons why Africans make great missionaries. Um, and so not only, you know, your culture, not only your passport, but just in general, Africans and, and, and even Kenyans have a lot of positives of a lot of, been given a lot from God, I think, to be used to take the gospel to the ends of the earth. And so one of those is just multicultural. I mean, in Nairobi alone, you have hundreds of different cultures coming together. Um, and so you're interacting with, with people from different cultures all around the world. Um, so you're um, already equipped with crossing cultures because you live in, uh, in, in, in and amongst different cultures. Career flexibility. Many of you are studying in university, but what you're studying, you might not even use um, as a profession, um, which maybe could be a negative thing, but could also just show that you guys are so flexible in your careers that you can study one thing but you can also go and do other things as well um, that you are uh, able to adapt to the changing conditions and even available opportunities. And especially this would give you a benefit of adapting to opportunities in, in unreached places. Also skillful human resource, you're quick learners, entrepreneurial. I've, in my four years in Kenya, I've just been amazed at just how, um, how yeah, just how much you guys hustle um, whenever there's a need, um, whenever you're um, trying to find a job, you guys can kind of just create jobs. I don't know where you see the need. You see, hey, this is um, something that people are wanting or I can, I can contribute to society that will also um, give me an income. You guys are resilient. Um, so uh, you're, you're used to harsh 
living conditions. You're used to changing economies and um, yeah, just are very resilient and um, yeah, just able to sustain through um, challenging circumstances. Multilingual. Many of you know two, three, maybe even more languages. And so to go to a different culture to learn a new language, that's, that's not much to learn a fourth language. For me, I'm still I'm on one language, trying to learn Swahili. People say it's easy, but I feel like they're lying to me. Swahili seems very challenging to me. I know it's not the hardest language like Mandarin or Arabic, but it's still hard. And so for you guys to be multilingual, to be able to go into another culture and learn a language um, is such a benefit and a blessing to do that, um, to share the gospel. So economic in implications, you require less financial resources than a Western missionary. Yeah, I mean, I think just to be honest, like you guys um, aren't, like for, for me, or for Western missionaries, it takes a lot more money to send us. But for you guys, you can go um, with little money, with less money than, than what's needed for us. And I think that's just a reality. And then ease of reach. Um, yeah, you guys, um, yeah, just kind of what we said before about cultures, like your culture um, is closer to other cultures um, amongst unreached people groups. And so like for me, if you saw on that map or that, that graph, the U.S. was one of the farthest away from most of the cultures uh, in unreached people groups, but you guys are, are some of the closer um, cultures and can adapt easier. Your youthful continent uh, is about 65% of Africa's population is 35 years and below, making Africa the most youthful continent uh, in the world. And so the potential for Africa to be a great, a global missionary force is great. And you have, um, it's, it's much easier to send young people than it is to send families who've been established in, in a place, in a town, in, in their home for a long time and have their children. But to, to send out young people uh, is so much easier, much more adaptable, flexible, um, willing to go uh, to the ends of the earth. Geographical location, Kenya specifically is close to unreached people. Have You have unreached people groups in your own country and you're not far from places like Somalia and Djibouti and Sudan and even the Arab Peninsula and North Africa. It's not too difficult to get to those places. And then like we saw from uh, the Joshua Project, the rapid growth of Christianity, um, yeah, three, th over 3% a rate of Christianity, uh, Christian growth in Kenya. And I'm just seeing that 80% of the church is outside of the West, um, is in Africa. And so there's just a booming population of Christians here in Kenya and all of Africa. So, yeah, I, I hope you see that, yeah, that we, that me as a Mzungu, as a Westerner, I am I'm not any more equipped to be a missionary than you are. One, we have the same Holy Spirit. Two, all these reasons we talked about why you would make a great missionary, why there's so much potential in the African church, in the Kenyan church, to send out missionaries, so many unsent people, so many unmobilized people, when there's such a great need around the world to take the gospel to these people. Um, and so there's a quote by John Piper, you've probably heard of it, but missions exist because worship doesn't. And so we see because three billion people, because over that are not worshiping Jesus, missions exist. Lack of worship. We need missions. We need people to take the gospel to places where there is no worship. But we've seen that missions doesn't, it's, it's not really existent in many parts of the world, in many places where the church is present. And that's what why mobilization exists. Mobilization, mobilization exists because missions doesn't. We need to mobilize because we need more missionaries. And so a little kind of graph chart to show you just how um, powerful mobilization is. And so imagine that you are mobilizing or discipling four people a year. 
Um, and so hypothetically, out of those four people, three become missionaries and one becomes a mobilizer. And so then they, the one mobilizer goes and finds four people and it just goes on and on like that. So after year one, you have three missionaries. After year five, you have 93 missionaries. After year 10, you have over 3,000 missionaries. That's amazing. That's a huge amount of missionaries. Let's say you change that from two, one mobilizer to two mobilizers. So after year three, you have, or after year one, you have less missionaries, just two than before but you then year five you have less just 242 missionaries but by year 10 you have almost 60,000 missionaries just in 10 years you could have 60,000 missionaries going to the nations but even more let's say three people are uh after you disciple them for a year three people become mobilizers one becomes a missionary um, and so those three people then go and mobilize more people. And so after year one, just one missionary. Hmm, seems kind of like you didn't do that much year one. But by year five, you have 340 missionaries. By year 10, almost 350,000 missionaries uh, going to the nations. That's almost doubling the current missionary force that we have right now. So imagine what you could do just by simply discipling and mobilizing four people and challenging those four people to either go or to mobilize other people. We could almost double the mission force just in 10 years. 10 years is not a long time, but we could do it. And so I believe the Kenyan church, I think I keep saying this, is ready and able to see a movement of thousands of missionaries going to the least reached areas of the world with the greatest news in the world. And I hope you see that we need more mobilizers. We need more people mobilizing their friends and their families and their churches to go to the nations. And so we started with one of my favorite movies. We're going to end with one of my favorite movies. Um, and just hope you see just kind of the, the parallels between the mission force and um, yeah, what we, we hope to see in the world. Captain Sam, can you hear me? Your left.
that oh man that scene gets me just so pumped especially when I think about the church and just seeing um kind of reinforcements being sent to the front lines um, of the mission field and I believe that the Kenyan church can do this and I desire that this would happen um, in the Kenyan church and I believe it's going to take us all um, there's no way that I can do this or that you can do this on our own but we can do this together to see the Kenyan church become the mission force that I think it's ready to be um, so just to finish I'm going to read one verse, um, and then we can maybe ask some questions. But Romans 10, it has always been my ambition to preach the gospel where Christ was not known, so that I would not be building on someone else's foundation. This is Paul saying, I don't, I don't want to build on anybody else's foundation. I don't want to preach the gospel where it's already known. I want to go to places where it's not been preached where they do not know and have not heard and I pray that this would all be our desire that God would give us the same desire as Paul and that we'd be willing to risk everything to see the gospel taken to all peoples of the earth so, yeah, thank you um, and so if there's any questions I think yeah this is the time to do that I'll stop sharing my screen Yes, thank you. Thank you so much, Taylor, for, for taking us through that. Um, we really appreciate you. Yeah.